uh, a lot of uh, hype about it. But just a word of caution, they yes, come with a lot of calories, proteins, carbohydrates, fruit and uh, calcium. Some of them are very, very good in that. So uh, we're all wanting to use that. But just a word of caution on that. Please do not use more than one third of your uh, carbohydrates from millets. They do have tannins, they have gyrogens, they've got oxalates, they've got enzyme inhibitors, and if you take too much of it, it will be overload of fibers. So when we are advising people to take millets, please, there is a lot of hype about it. People have totally converted to uh, millets and given up wheat, which is good because they're gluten-free, but make sure that you caution them that do not use them in excess. They are a lot of advantages. They come with all the bioactive compounds. They have antioxidant, antihypertensive, and anti-inflammatory properties. So definitely important. And Johar and pearl millet bajra and foxtail millet and finger millet ragi are one of the most used. So just be sure that we tell them to use them, they come with a lot of advantages, but use them with a little caution. So over to you to take this program forward. Hello, very good evening. Uh, yeah. Am I audible and visible? Yeah, yeah, you are. Please take it yeah. forward. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Anita, ma'am, for giving a nice introduction about the topic and as well as about the speakers. And thank you, Day Day. Uh, thank you, Day, for organizing such a very nice. And uh, today is the end of the day, so we will discuss about millets, and it is a very important burning topic. Uh, people are becoming what Anita, ma'am, rightly said. Sometimes people are becoming very much crazy about millets and taking all their diet in the weight loss regime. They are taking only millets. So this year, 2023, has been proclaimed as the International Year of Millet by the United. Nations at the initiative of the Indian government. So the Department of Agriculture and the Farmer Welfare aims to promote the cultivation and consumption of millet at a large scale and bring it to the entire world. But millets are an ancient crop. It is not new to us of the mankind and it holds a lot of importance in the agriculture of India. So it is very much primitive. It is not new to us. But why we are again promoting millets in 2023? So I will come to uh, our speaker, Ms. Malovika. So Ms. Malovika, if you kindly just give us a glimpse of history of millets, because people nowadays in the urban population thinks that millet is very new to us. But in the North India, if we see, so Northern India, millets, use of millets is very much popular, even uh, nowadays also. So Malovika, what we will say about the history of millets and types of millets, then we will come to diabetes. Yes. Thank you, Shomendu. Thank you, Anita Jatana, ma'am. And thank you also, Seril, and the organizing team of the day. First of all, the first question about the history of the millet. So, millet is a uh, one of the traditional uh, cereal. It was cultivated in Asia and Africa more than 4,000 years ago. They were major grain in Europe during the Middle Ages. And though it was the traditional grain, it was consumed by half of the population of Asia and Africa. India is the major contributor for the millet production, where 170 lakh tons of millets get produced every day. And the five uh, major states where the millets production are so much, that are the Rajasthan, Karnataka, Maharashtra, Uttar Pradesh, and Haryana. One thing that is millets need a minimal pest management approach for the cultivation. And it was easy to grow and do not take much of soil and is a rain-fed crop than the rice and the wheat. So hence, millets are one of the most cost-effective crops for the farmers in India. Millets are the most beneficial for health since they are gluten-free 
and also very easy to digest and it protect us from the cardiovascular disease and also managing the diabetes compared to the other cereals but now the production of the millets get decreased day by day due to the various uh, commercial food like uh, pasta oats noodles refined flour are very much available in uh, market so the production of the millets are very much decreased nowadays now the next question the uh, types of the millets so there are 6000 types of the millets in across the world but the availability production consumption of the millets we can uh, classify the millets uh, in two groups uh, major and minor groups we can put the major groups that is sorghum known as the jowar pearl millet the bajra and the finger millet ragi in the major groups and the minor group the foxtail millet barnyard and the kodo millet buck millet hari kagni this all the in the minor groups so this is the types of the millets thank you malavika you have nicely explained about the history of the millets and you have al already mentioned about the gluten sensitivity also so that we will discuss li later on so coming to mom uh, miss mom so if you can just highlight the benefits of health benefits of millets and why it is becoming super food why millets is super food so obviously you can highlight about the diabetes also i think if you do not use your headphone we can not listen to you you cannot okay. without your phone it is distracting Okay. There is a little disturbance. I think just move this and see. Good evening. Yeah, this is yes, yes, it is perfect. Yeah, yeah, Am I audible now? Are you up? Please go ahead. Yeah. And thank you, uh, thank you very much, and good evening, all present here. So um, you have asked about the health benefits. Like now, everyone very much fascinated about the millet. Whoever is coming to our chamber, they are telling that we are not having any of uh, wheat products. We switched over to the millet because it is true that it is a it is also known as a super food because it contains lots of qual good quality of protein, uh, high uh, amount of essential vitamins and minerals, good quality of carbohydrate, healthy fats, and uh, they are known to be as a nutritional powerhouse. because it contains lots of vitamins and minerals like calcium iron magnesium manganese zinc potassium because it also helps to improves our improve our immunity level it contains uh, millet all type of millet contains generally good quality fiber because of it it helps to improve the uh, digestibility gut function and it also helps to drain out the toxins in terms of uh, uh, become it comes uh, to help in the proper digestion uh, in our daily life acha oh, then it is also uh, helps to improve the problem related with the migraine like uh, triggering migraine problem um, like um, heavy or deep pain or anything uh, triggers the migraine it also contain it also helps to improve because it contains lots of minerals lots of fiber and it also uh, known to control the asthma also and all the, the different we have lots of varieties of millets generally all the varieties contains a uh, good quality fiber and all varieties contains different varieties of vitamins and minerals so it has become a super food nowadays and most of them or most of the uh, clients those who are coming to us are telling that we are having a mixture of millets we are mixing different kinds different varieties together we are mixing it as a um, like flour 
of uh, mixed millet flour and we are using as our breakfast cereal we are using as our uh, lunch or the replacement of uh, dinner so it is good but one thing that i should say it has lots of health benefits but we have to think about the mixing before we mix and take all the kind of millets together true very so, true uh, it, it also contains lots of healthy fats so before you mix we must uh, think or we must counsel our clients that before you mix all the varieties you have to think you have to come to us and you have to take uh, some dis- uh, ideas advice from advice from the dietitians or advice from us very true very true so you have nicely explained about the fact of the millet so uh, if we consider about the fiber so i will come to professor ornab so if we consider about that yeah, fiber so uh, ha, yeah so if you kindly uh, mr ornab if you kindly explain to us what is the proportion of soluble insoluble fiber in the millet and how does fiber content make it preferred choice for diabetes thank you thank you shomendu sir and all the organizing committee thank you um, uh, sareel madam and anita madam for introducing us properly and it was a really great honor for us to be here and particularly in academy she as an academician i am here and uh, as shomendu sir correctly asked me that uh, how do you perceive this uh, soluble and insoluble fiber and their composition and how it is going to help the diabetic patient so the question is here majority of the uh, fiber content which present in our uh, millets that is insoluble in form so in the in the last session we were discussing about the gastritis you know and that is one of the reason but uh, if you talk about the diabetes which also persists with the chronic lower grade of uh, uh, this uh, inflammation there you know uh, this you know this insoluble fiber the presence of this insoluble fiber has a great role particularly when we consider the panic cells as the gatekeeper of the intestine so the if you have if you have a good amount of insoluble fiber that induces the short chain fatty acids that induces the bile acid secretion that has a huge role on uh, you know our uh, this uh, uh, this vegf uh, the growth factors vaso uh, this vasothelial endo uh, this vaso endothelial growth factors and there are certain other factors also associated with this uh, even the uh, one more important aspect is to have a great uh, you know j- this uh, 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 GPR thirty nine. This uh, so these are the particular protein G protein couple receptor thirty nine, which also get induced by the presence of good amount of insoluble fiber because majority of this insoluble fiber will go to the large intestine, and this uh, the presence of this large intestine uh, the presence of this particular insoluble fiber in the large intestine will be having a great impact because. what we generally used to believe earlier that probiotic is much better in, in in the maintenance of the intestinal epithelial integrity but what happens is the means if you consume particularly it is in the form of curd or any other probiotic supplementations it is not that much uh, in, uh, useful if if you if you are not consuming it in a, a, a in an encapsulated form so what happens majority of most of the time this uh, curd and everything whenever they are going through this our uh, this gastric effluxes of this hcls and everything there are hardly the the bacteria which is required to bring enough amount of change that is not going to get colonized in our large intestine so what happens is uh, rather if you treat the patient if you ask the patient to consume a uh, prebiotic and whatever the good amount of bacteria present in our large intestine they will get their enough amount of food so in that context when you are feeding them in enough amount so what will happen the you know the your goblet cells and beneath that the panic cells they will be activated they will get activated and that will induces the intestinal stem cells and if the intestinal stem cells are getting regenerated what will happen the epithelial integrity of that particular patient will be much higher and if the intestinal in this intestinal epithelial integrity is getting intact 
then what will happen? Everything, every metabolic system, particularly the pro-inflammatory pathways which get activated, that can have a be that can be compensated with the activation of the anti-inflammatory pathways. Because you know, gut-associated lymphoid tissues, the gut-associated lymphoid tissues will be coming into the action, and that will have a great role for the diabetic patient. Particularly, True. you know, those who are majority of the patients are type 2 diabetes, so they will be having n number of problems. And here, you know, one more problem, uh, one more thing also can be addressed because in for the type uh, for this uh, for the secretion of the insulin, <clears throat> we know there are some receptors as uh, available, particularly in the um, uh, uh, zinc transporter A, that is also useful for packaging of the insulin. Insulin packaging also depends the availability of the nutrient. If the nutrient is not becoming uh, become available, then what happens the in the the you know the lot of uh, these medicines which are uh, like insulin secretion they induces the insulin secretion that is also not going to be impactful until and unless the insulin is getting properly packed then only it will become a deliverable amount of insulin and in that context also the regeneration of the intestinal epithelial integrity it is much needed and in that context our millets is has a it's definitely is having a great role to play particularly for the diabetes patient and other non-communicable disease because it is actually associated with the prevention of the dysbiosis. If we can uh, prevent the Actually, I, I was going to uh, going to towards yes. that question of dysbiosis, or, right, but right, you right. have already answered. So right, we are right. moving to Ms. Coel. Thank you, Arnav, sir, for giving a nice, yes. nice explanation. So, uh, Coel, if you uh, share your opinion as we already came to know it is a superfood, if you kindly share about it, why it is superfood for diabetes and its insulin role in insulin sensitivity. Because as we know, Asians are more into insulin sensitivity and central obesity, all these things. So if you can throw some lights about the role of millets and insulin sensitivity. Uh, there is two question, but before that, good evening everyone. I feel so humbled that uh, you have uh, invited me and thank you the entire team today. So let's start. Shomendu sir has addressed that millet is superfood. So let's explain why it is superfood. Because already my senior panel, panelists explained so nicely like millet is entitled as superfood. Why so? First of all, it contains soluble insoluble fiber, which actually handles the gut dysbiosis. Today, we are very much focused on the gut dysbiosis. Many are having the gut uh, problem and we are promoting the gut health. So, the fiber actually enacts very well regarding the gut dysbiosis and it helps uh, or aids the constipation, flatulence, diarrhea, this kind of condition uh, we can control over with the help of millet, first of all. And second, it contains lots of antioxidants like lignans and anthocyanins saponins, flavonoids, there are lots of antioxidants. We all know that the role of antioxidant is especially to scavenge the free radicals and actually it aids or inhibits the inflammation and fatigue as well. So in terms of gut health, in terms of antioxidant, it plays a very vital role. Now coming to the insulin part, mostly the patient are diabetic or else many patients as Shomendu sir addressed like many patients are having insulin resistance. They are not only diabetic, either they are having PCOD or other genetic problem. So that is also a fact. It is already evident that whenever the patients who are consuming millets very predominantly, uh, there are lots of study even in recent study 2021-22, it is evident that the, if the patient is consuming lots of millets now, that their insulin level, the insulin activity is much more proactive and the insulin resistance is actually, it's lowering the insulin resistance. So even I'm focusing on the insulin activity, they, like there are foxtail millets, they are lot, they have, they're having lots of fiber, they're having lots of protein. So it increases the insulin sensitivity and decreases the insulin resistance as well as foxtail millet, it increases the concentration of leptin. And by leptin, actually, it enhances the satiety value. So it is very important. And uh, I'm just, uh, I want to include one very practical example. Somehow it has happened that whenever the patient is highly diabetic for a long time, 
what happened the sarcopenia may, may take place like muscle mass wasting so that time i have to give the patient that kind of cereals which helps to increase the in insulin sensitivity as well as we can provide the proper energy to the patient so millet is the ideal choice i guess because it provides lots of energy optimum amount of energy and as well as it decreases the insulin resistance so uh, in asian scenario or in indian scenario instead of considering bmi if we focus on the central obesity in bengali we call it uri hoye jacche so if we focus on the central obesity and insulin resistance we must include the millet part because even one more thing even in ragi there are high amount of magnesium as well so we all know that magnesium plays an important role to increase or enhance the insulin sensitivity right <laughs> and uh, for that reason we can include the millets and not only that uh, millets are having lots of amino acid as uh, arnab sir said that if we clap it very gently like we can have the millet roti with prem gram dal then it would be the best option it gives the example of balanced diet so i think so uh, we can consider it like millets is really a super food and if we include it gently then it acts like a hero i think so uh, because uh, we are already always cereal dependent i'm not telling that we have to discard the rice and roti definitely we can include even we can include millet in a, in a optimum way and we can choose very wisely so thank you uh, nicely explained well uh, you have nicely explained about all the things especially about the sarcopenia especially about the role of millets and uh, how it can but anita ma'am has already in the beginning told us about the portion control of millet so uh, we cannot take it in a more amount whatever amount we want and discard all other cereals and only having millets or we should not stick to only one particular millets and even we will discuss uh, uh, after some time about the some recipes because millets roti are very much stiff and hard and when we are prescribing in our states so many people restrict to take this millets so now coming to malavika ma'am about uh, asking about the blood glucose control specially post meal because we have three major meal breakfast lunch and dinner so people tend to have more in the dinner and how can millets play a good role in controlling our post prandial blood glucose and if we control our post prandial blood glucose so we can control our average blood glucose so if you can highlight about our menu planning yes so uh, millets can uh, if we incorporate the millets in our uh, daily diet in the uh, particularly in a major meal uh, it's uh, helpful for the post prandial uh, glucose level and also the hbavc because we know the fiber has role to play to control the blood glucose level and gradually maintain the high spike level of the glucose in blood so uh, we know the millets have lower gi but nowadays it is uh, a controversial because uh, i can uh, say it's a moderate gi in the uh, millets because the uh, uh, pearl millets having only 56 gi other millets like finger millets or kodo millets or uh, little millets having gi between the 60 to 65 so we can't say this is the low gi content uh, food and also millets uh, reach in the high fiber which regulates the blood sugar and also decrease the high glucose spike level which uh, help to manage the postprandial glucose in the blood and maintaining also the hba1c so uh, i also uh, include one point uh, the fiber part of the millet in the outer layer of the uh, millet like the uh, bran or germ and nowadays uh, the germ part or the uh, bran parts are stripped away uh, due to more profit because the company are uh, makes the polished millet instead of the unpolished millet but we know the unpolished millet contain the high fiber and also the uh, gi content so uh, we are going for the unpolished millet and that will be helpful for the uh, to maintain the uh, postprandial glucose level and also the hba1c so 
it is very important uh, you have highlighted we will come to this question later on if we get time about this polished and unpolished again coming to mom madam uh, about uh, the overuse of millets uh, mom madam are you there mom bhattacharya ha yeah, so, request all uh, panelists to put your cameras on please yeah if you can everybody put your cameras on so if mom uh, is ha so if you can highlight about uh, you we you told us about that um, um, even ma'am also told us about the disadvantage of the millets also i will come to arnob sir uh, after you about the cost effectiveness of millets and about the cultivations of millets and how we can promote millets to every household so that we will discuss but before that we come to you so if you can uh, share your any live experience about millets or any case specifications that how people are using uh, millets uh, that is overuse of millets okay and my next question will be uh, millets for the hypothyroidism patients so can we give millets to the hypothyroid patients so first question that i came uh, to meet uh, like one of my client came to my chamber a few uh, months back so um, uh, he, he is telling that her uh, his wife is bedridden due to some uh, cva problem or some uh, different kinds of problem uh, and um, he when he came to know about the goodness of millets or the benefits of millet he start uh, started using a different variety of millets in breakfast different varieties of millets in uh, lunch and dinner and he is also feeding her uh, his wife with some of the nutritional um, health supplements with that millet and he, uh, his wife uh, is non diabetic non hypertensive and having severe loose motion like um, uh, in a 5 uh, minutes she um, have to pass two times uh, loose stools so it and, is very uh, uh, very disturbing he, he wants to know uh, he came to me that he wants to know whatever uh, we can what will be the actual menu for his wife so when i came to know that he is mixing uh, foxtail millets he is mixing kodo millets he is mixing uh, like um, which we uh, call as a cow rice uh, that that variety that like he is he used to mix five to six varieties together and he uh, make it uh, in a dust form uh, like uh, where, uh, as we are shake. feeding our he is using children, like a shake uh, mixing sorry? all the millets and mixing all the millets shake. and he is mixing that uh, percentage of millets like uh, uh, in uh, one bowl he is giving he t- try to giving his wife um, uh, every two hourly feed and every feed he is mixing that um, uh, mixed uh, powder of millet uh, like two tablespoon with some well known supplement which helps to control the diabetes but so without without consulting he, anyone no, madam without consulting he is not consulting anyone because he came to know that millet is very good millet helps to control the blood sugar level millet gives him uh, his wife um, good result but out of nothing he is not getting any good results so that's why he came to me they what is the uh, reason what are the reason behind that he can't understand because he is feeding his wife good quality of cereals he is not giving any uh, rice outside because food or rice because he has a fear of uh, fear about the rice so that but out of nothing his wife's postprandial blood sugar does is not uh, under going control. to be control is not under control so what is the reason so there is a reason because millets is a kind of uh, high fiber uh, group and he is mixing all or like five to six varieties together and it after mixing all this together it's uh, the total fiber content becomes very high and his wife is a bedridden patient so he has some gut issues he must she sorry she, she must have some gut gut issues out of nothing he uh, don't uh, need to consult she is lying down not doing any exercise also na right not doing any exercise only physiotherapist 
some days but is not at all very uh, consistent physiotherapy and nothing he doesn't even we have to consider anything. madam about the fluid also as you are saying too yeah, much of yeah. millet so water and content is also important How exactly much? and at a go he is uh, he, he is going to fit 250 ml uh, glass of uh, that mixture like in form of a smoothie uh, like um, like uh, and if he is giving his wife at around 10 am 250 ml of that smoothie and after one hour he is feeding at around 11 another 250 ml then he is leaving two hours gap so actually he is giving one hour lifting so that's why lifting. the problem hai that so problem becomes very uh, crucial for this uh, particular uh, type of patient that i find that he is mixing different kinds of varieties together and he is also giving a good quality of nutrition with this millet so total carbohydrate consumption in no go becomes very high total fiber contained at that particular volume like 250 ml of that uh, smoothie becomes very high that's why he is not become able to control his wife's uh, glucose spike like postprandial glucose sugar and uh, or whenever he is checking it becomes very high and the severe loose motion so after giving some consultation one or two visits her, his wife he her postprandial sugar becomes quite okay and the loose motion if she used to pass 20 times it has become 10 times so very good example to, that is yeah. very good example we are getting from this case that how it can become severe a super food can become a culprit also culprit so if we, if we do not use know the right use of the millets so always we will uh, educate the community to come to a dietitian and then consult and then they should take whatever foods they like like to take it even the people are very much cra- crazy about seeds nuts all these things five or six seeds they are taking Uh, together exactly. to control their exactly. PCOS and all this. So I am coming to uh, the thyroid question later on. Before that, Cheryl, ma'am, can you please tell us how much time is left with us? Five minutes. Okay, so I will not take elaborate answer because all the speakers are giving little bit elaborate answer. So, Arnab sir, if you just highlight in very short, like in one minute, about the. phytochemicals if it is present in the millets can be in a futuristic nutritional development can we use it and about the cost effectiveness because we can uh, grow ra- uh, ragi uh, jowar bajra together yeah uh, right, right. right because it is very environment friendly a uh, substance though it is having as correctly said by uh, the, when the notion was setting up uh, anita madam rightly said and mom madam also said about it but the thing is uh, it is very a uh, na- nature friendly and a true organic substance so you don't need any sort of uh, substances as maluvika madam also said that paste we do not need anything so it is a very in terms of that it is a very cost effective for the farmers as well and but the thing is when you search it in any uh, means you know any uh, any online platform or anywhere in supermarket so that is very costly so this uh, something which is uh, the agriculture the farmers are not aware about the beneficial root of the role about this particular crops and it is very handy to uh, cultivate uh, and the people are also getting too much of hype about this particular uh, substance so what happens is the the in between the market is getting all the uh, you know all the benefits market is getting benefit and far- farmers benefit are losing everything farmers is low farmers are losing and you know and so means all the people those who were associated with this particular uh, crop productions they are not having that much of mm, not getting that much of you know any profit and the thing is you know uh, uh, the, uh, when we, we talk about the phytochemical content about the millet it is actually in uh, rich in lot of some of the uh, substances like tannins and you know plus, but uh, those which uh, those who are associated with the you know the uh, degrading the bioavailability content of the many divalent cations like our uh, iron zinc and many substances but though it is having a good impact but still we have to as correctly said by all the other panelists that the amount uh, amount the portion size and the nutrient based delivery system we have to be uh, focus about that particular substance not just about the 
the, the amount, not just about the content, it is about the nutrient, how we are going to make it happen. Because the whole nutritional uh, fraternity is trans getting transited from this, our transition is going on from this, uh, you know, generalized approach to personalized approach. And in this personalized approach, gut is going to play a great role. And millet is having good amount of anthocyanins and some amount of uh, tannins also that in some other aspects like, you know, that anthocyanins which are present in the millets can be extracted and that can be used as a good, good amount of, you know, uh, natural uh, color. So that anthocyanins uh, are good for uh, means making other foods, uh, colored food substances. And that will have a much better impact compared to whatever the available substances are, whatever the available substances are usually we are getting in markets. So pellets are in, you know, the RCTs, the randomized controlled trials, and in a true sense, human studies are uh, not many as, uh, you know, so that's what, uh, whatever is happening, it is happening because about their fiber content and some of the phytochemicals, what they contain, some amount of flavonoids and something like that. And means majority of the papers, if you've gone through, that is, they are all, uh, like we nowadays we have also this uh, bioinformatics that we can take the molecular docking or something like that. So we are all making the pathways which how these millets can uh, be useful to um, in uh, regular practices or particularly non-communicable diseases or in our regular dietary index. But really we need to focus on some more evidence-based experimental, particularly human studies are needed in this particular uh, uh, new. Though it was earlier ancient history, we have it, but we need in this modern context when the lifestyles are getting changed, how much amount of millet should be incorporated in a true sense that really needs to be done. Though it is cost effective, but still we have means have to think about that the portion and the quantity, how much we should include in the day to day basis, then only we should come to the proper recommendation or else it will really become a culprit as you correctly say. Thank so you. I am coming to the end of our discussion uh, with two more questions to Koel, uh, Ma'am and Malavika. So about uh, we have learned about the polished and unpolished millet. So Koel, if you can highlight because millet people are becoming very much crazy. So they are taking millet's cookies also. So millet cookies and these are not good traditional recipes. Uh, what, uh, if you can highlight and if you can highlight about the polished and unpolished. And Malavika ma'am, tell some uh, thing about the cardiac health and if millet can be given to the CKD patient. So Malavika ma'am, you can start with, then Quail can wind up with the last one. CKD for the diabetic. So, uh, Other please mute yourself because there is a sound coming in the background. Yes. So diabetic patient, we have the renal impairment. So we, uh, the diabetic patient doesn't know the blood parameters. He or she incorporate the millets in her daily diet. That will be harmful for the patient because of millets are rich in protein. Millets are rich in uh, minerals like, like potassium. So renal impairment, if he or she having, and that time millets uh, intake in daily basis, that time the patient might be the major facing the major problem. So before incorporate the millets, please uh, go for the dietitian and check the blood parameters. And after that, the incorporate the millets in your daily diet. And also, you unmute, unmute. Too much of millets. Mom, madam has given an example. So if the patient is having CKD or the creatinine is high or the potassium is high. So patients should go for the blood parameters first, then Definitely. they should incorporate the millet. So without Definitely. coming to a dietitian, it will it can be dangerous also for the regular consumption for a CKD patient. Okay. And also it is uh, very much helpful for the cardiac patient cardiac because patient. Uh, the so much of fiber uh, contain the millets and uh, we can see the triglyceride level is became low Controlled. if you incorporate the millets in the uh, such as we know triglyceride is directly related with carbohydrate not fat so instead of taking refined cereal if we incorporate some millets in their diet so it, it can yes. it give a very good result in lowering triglyceride and total cholesterol as well 
Yes. So, yes, and yes. La, just we will wind up with Quail and uh, Quail, if you tell about the choosing of right millet and if we have one minute time, so you can answer about the thyroid questions also. Okay. And just one, one minute before, I have done one community outreach program. Just I want to share the story. The people are coming from a very poor area in South Kolkata and they are saying that we are having lots of millets. So I became very astonished. If they are discarding the rice and roti and they are focusing on okay. the millets. So just one hour before it was happened. And as Shomendu sir said regarding polished, unpolished, semi-polished semi millets, what happened? In unpolished millets, when we are removing the husk, the outer layer actually is containing the lignin. We all know that lignin is known to balance the cellular homeostasis, right? So, and obviously it prevents the cancer. So, definitely the unpolished millets are obviously beneficial, but the problem is that it has a short shelf life, it, it has the minimum shelf life, and it's very hard to digest, as Shomitu sir addressed before. But in semi-polished millets, what happened? The husk is partially removed. So for that reason, nutrients are actually compromised, a little bit compromised. So the moderate health benefits may come from the semi-polished millets. But what happened? We love to go supermarkets nowadays and there is only polished millets. What happened? Because polished millets have perishability, na? perishability longevity is high. Longevity is it high. has a longer shelf life. Definitely. Longer shelf life. It, it is very easy to digest. And uh, if you say that the polished millet, actually we can observe that it shows the proper white white color but in the unpolished millet the color the nutrients remains as it is and the next problem is in the polished millet there are there must be some adulterants in many cases like rice grains are incorporated into that uh, so we can easily understand that it's not the traditional food we are definitely get very much crazy on the polished millet but the health benefits are not providing the proper nutrients not providing the exact bioavailability of all the nutrients so i would like to add one thing we have to focus on the climate friendly easily available traditional millets at the end and definitely we can have roti we can have pulao dosa there are lots and lots of recipes even uh, we are having some popcorns millets popcorns we can have the ragi biscuits with that there are lots and lots of traditional foods. Uh, senior mams are also there, onups are also there. You can add on that. Uh, we can have ragi dosa. Even. Uh, we can have millets kukma. So these are all the uh, items we can include in our breakfast cereal, in our lunch, dinner. It's easily access accessible. And I would like to address one thing. We have to so choose. Now we have to wrap up. Just ah, make yes, it short. Yes. Huh? To ensure the food and uh, nutrition security, we have to choose all the nutrients very properly and very wisely as per their condition. That's it. Thank, Thank you. you all the panelists. Over to Anita, ma'am. Yeah, excellent session, Sormanga. Congratulations to you. You've handled it very well. 